Hello everyone, yes, uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm Anthony Zubnik, and uh, yeah, I work for Wolfram Research Europe, um, but we're basically all Wolfram Research, I guess the Europe thing doesn't really matter. So my job is, um, well, I'm, a, I'm officially classified as a kernel developer in, in our company. Uh, I predominantly work in the cloud. So for the last two years, I've been working on our cloud platform. More recently, I've been working on connecting Excel Microsoft Excel to, to our cloud platform. Um, and one of the things that I really like playing around with, like more in my spare time, is, um, is, is machine learning and helping the machine learning team with, with some of the problems that they, they, they may face debugging within our language. So, you know, what I want to, you know, present to you today is basically a start to finish, like you know, how you grab your data in our and in, in our computer. And what you what you'll see here as well is that um, what I'm presenting in is I'm presenting in our software. And the reason why I'm presenting in our software is because then I can actually show you live coding. Well, kind of live. I mean, I mean, it is, it is live. Um, I'm not going to be typing live. I've got my fancy phone to, here to control all of the all of the calculations, and I spent many nights over the last over the last week trying to get this prepared for you. And basically, I finished it about an hour ago. So, the keywords for my my presentation were uh, machine learning, uh, data mining, computational knowledge. So, you know, I show you how machine learning functions, and some of them. I mean, we've got a lot of a lot of machine learning functions now. We've been doing this for the last, uh, well, we've been developing for the last four years or so. So, like some some significant machine learning algorithms, but um, but maybe only in the last couple of years have they have they really come to fruition. So, I mean, that kind of comes into you know data mining and, and and things like that. So, I show you, I'll show you how you do clustering and and, and things. And also, I want to show. And the other keyword was computational knowledge. And that's basically, you know, kind of a lot of what our company is about is being able to access um, knowledge about the real world directly into a, into a language. Um, and we probably do it the best, well, that I've seen personally. So, I mean, what is the Wolfram language? And you know, a lot of people don't really know what the Wolfram language is. Um, basically, I mean, I'm using the software Mathematica, which runs... Uh, on the Wolfram language, um, but it gives it this nice front end, and the nice front end means that I can create these nice pretty pictures for you, uh, and obviously show um, show code. So it's this all-in-one language which basically encompasses um, a lot of areas of computation. So I've used the phrase universal computation, um, basically to say that you know we we absorb a lot of different areas. So we do image processing, geometrical calculations. Um, you know, your standard, in, you know, uh, linear algebra and symbolic computation. Now we've got machine learning, a lot of different data science areas and things like that. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how much stuff we actually manage to include and in the amount of stuff that we're actually developing. I mean, one of the key, one of the key things that I, that I think a lot of people are interested in, especially when it comes to our language, is rapid prototyping. So to be able to quickly create an application um, and get it out there for testing, and then maybe if you, if you need it, you need to make a more sophisticated application, then you're going to have to spend more time. Um, but for at least from a, from a prototyping point of view, it's fantastic. And another good thing which has come in the era of the cloud is instant deployment. Um, I mean, we can deploy things and we can create these, these documents which we can send to people as, as, as this format that we have called CDF, um, but you have to install something on your machine, but with the advent of the cloud, basically, you get a link, uh, you click on your link, and then you've, then you've got access to all of this computation without having to install anything on your machine. So, in terms of the machine learning functions that we actually have, um, you know, what's... Why, why would you care? So, I mean, my, my, from my perspective, some of the some of the uh, some of the best the, be, the best things about our machine learning functions are they're really simple to write. So it's really hard to get it wrong uh, from from that perspective. Um, so we reduce the amount of knowledge uh, the common man requires uh, for for machine learning, and uh, we do a lot of automation behind the scenes. Which is great because that means you know processing your data. You know, 
you could do some image processing, and the images need to be compressed down to a specific size um, to, to, to make the calculation more accurate, then it might, it might do that behind the scenes, it might not. You do have the ability to do things manually, but, um, but the fact is, uh, it's, 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 a lot of this is automated, which is really, really great uh, for people who aren't in the area. So, let's show you an example. Um, so, digit recognition. So, they're very, very quick to construct. So, here we have a classify, uh, this is classify function. Hopefully, this makes sense to you. Um, what we have here is, we have a classify function, we say we've got these, these digits, these handwritten digits, and these handwritten digits, we've, we, we have to specify a class, and in this case, they're going to be numbers. And that's it. We're already, we've already created, we've basically already created our classifier. So I want to specify again that we're, we're evaluating this code live. We've only got 100 examples here, so it's, quite e it's very fast to make a classifier. Obviously, once you scale up, um, it ends up being slower. So now we've created our classifier function, we're ready to actually test it. So um, I've added some styling to make this a uh, little bit more visible for you. But basically, all we have to do is use our function, which we call digit, and give it a value. And it will tell us what it is. And in this case, uh, it's 0. So this 0 is 0. Fair enough. Uh, and then we can you know, um, add more values just to ch test the accuracy. And um, and we've got the, the numbers 0 to 9, and we can see that it comes up as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 4, 7, 8, 9. And, um, well, the thing is, we have such a small number of examples, it's not actually too bad that it's come out around 70% uh, accurate. So another thing that um, there was a project that, um, that I worked on a bit, and uh, is one of, uh, well, this, this, this website basically came uh, viral, is imageidentify.com. And Image Identify allowed you to, to, write, to uh, upload an image, and it would tell you what that image was. And it was actually very successful. And we trained it with um, several million uh, images, um, and we linked them to, 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 to words uh, from WordNet. If you know WordNet, you can, you can look that up. Um, but the good thing is, is you can also use this in our language, and it kind of gives you, this was also constructed in our language, so this is something that you can construct yourself. So, I can use image identify, and um, I give it my, my image. This is my old motorbike, uh, rest in peace. Um, and I can evaluate this, and it will tell me it's a motorcycle. Cool. Um, let's get some more images. Now, this is, um, this is my attempt at uh, Spanish uh, tortilla. It's, <laughs> it's, not the, uh, it's not the most attractive thing in the world, I must say. And, um, Oh, no, I've uh, got the next image coming up right now. So now, I constructed this, uh, this software, I call it software, myself. So it's a, it's a, bit, uh, it's a bit temperamental uh, right now. Um, so let's just run that. And uh, we can see that it's come out as lasagna. So not really what I was hoping for, but then my tortilla doesn't look very nice anyway, and it really wasn't a tortilla. So I've got uh, this picture, this proof. Look, there's me in the picture. Um, so this isn't some kind of staged picture to give you, uh, give the result that I wanted. Um, and it tells me that I'm at the Coliseum. This is, this is pretty amazing. And I've got a couple more images. I'll just show a couple. So here's, here's, here's something else, something, something Spanish uh, that I created the other day. Uh, my colleague in, in, the, in the audience, he argues that this is not uh, a, a, a paella, um, but, but I think it is. And what, 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 what the, sure, you know, that's really weird, oh, no, 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 I've made a mistake, okay, that's totally wrong, so this is, this is the sleeping bag, so this is my, this is my colleague, um, he's, um, he, he's, he's, he, he's, he has this picture as his profile picture, and uh, it says the sleeping bag, that comes up, and it says it's, uh, it's a cooking pan, which isn't too bad. So we can also, you know, identify things that are, you know, a much, much uh, richer level. So here we can actually specify that not only is something a dog, but we can actually specify the species of dog, which is pretty, 
uh, which is pretty, pretty neat. And the thing is, you can now start to integrate these things into your, um, into your own function. So uh, let's uh, get a live feed. And uh, with my live feed, I should, um, I, I should have a picture here come up. Yeah, great. And it's telling me that whatever is behind there is a floppy disk. And um, I've got some random things here. So let's have a look. So we've got this bottle of water. Let's see what it says out of it. The things here. Beer glass, beaker, metronome, cocktail shaker. OK, that's not so great. What about, my, what about my phone? Remote control? Well, I'm using it as a remote control, so that's pretty good. Um, what else have I got? Uh, I got my passport. Uh, book. What about this way around? Book. Well, that's close enough. So, so the good thing is, is you know, I'm doing like live machine learning now, which is really cool, and this is updating, you know, once every like 0.2 seconds or something, which is which is pretty neat. So, what I can do is, um, I can make a security system. So, what I did is, uh, I made the security system, and basically. Uh, when a human gets into view, so you don't need to understand the code, I guess the, the most important thing here is, well, I've got this pointer, if it's a person, then it will take an image, uh, it will send this image to my zopnikpygmail.com uh, website, and I've hidden my password there so you can't steal my information. And I'll walk into place, and hopefully it will tell me it's found, if it's found a person. And um, it's doing something which suggests that it's successful. And um, yeah, so we can now go into my email. And then we can have a look what this actually is. So it says found human, great. Um, and uh, what we have is we have a picture of me caught in the act of using my own machine, which is fine. OK, so we have some uh, other uh, machine, built-in machine learning uh, classifiers that exist. And I'm just about to go to my machine again, but whatever. Um, let's, get a, let's get an image. So we can connect to various services. So we can connect to Google, Bing, um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, a lot, of different, a lot of different services that you can write in our native language, which is really useful. So one of the things we can do is you know, we can talk to Bing, and we can do a search, uh, and we're going to search for an image of Bill Gates, uh, and we're just going to ask for one of those images, and uh, we're going to see what it looks like. So now we're grabbing an image from Bing, we've got our image of Bill Gates, and what we can do is this is kind of similar to image identify, but this is focusing on people. Um, Let's uh, have this picture of uh, Gil, Bill, Bill Gates. Who is this person that we just took a pic that we got a picture of? And it tells us Bill Gates. Great. So what we can also do is we can start to develop a richer application. But this is really simple. I mean, this this took me I don't know 10 minutes. I didn't uh, I didn't spend too long on this. Um, but basically, what I've done is I've created a link to Twitter so that someone can upload their image. They upload their image with our, with our cloud platform using our, our form function. And then uh, it classifies who you are, tells you who you are, and it tweets that to you. And I'll go over here so that I can show you. Uh, I don't know why it's asking me for this. I don't need that anymore. So now we've got a link. Um, what can we do? Uh, we can go to this link. So I'll go to this link. And as long as the internet connection is fine, I don't need to put my Twitter handle in because it's just going to go to my Twitter. So this tweets directly from my account. And this is something that you can go on as well. Um, and I'll give you the link in a sec. And what I can do is I can upload an image. So oh, should I do that? No, I don't want that. So I'll just take a picture now. Great. And uh, I can just drag and drop this image. I take a lot of selfies, you see. I practice this, uh, I practice this a lot. So I'll, I'll submit this. 
And what we should see is that we, we, get, we get redirected to my Twitter page, and we should already find that the tweet is already there waiting for me. And it says that I, <laughs> that I look like Ray, Ray Toro. OK. Um, I, I don't know who that is. Uh, it looks like he's from Harry Potter or something like that. Um, I can't click on that image. Oh. I, I'm not really sure who that is. But OK, whatever. So you can go on this um, yeah, if you want to. Um, I laid out a little link for you that uh, will load for me. I'm not. Bl I'm. I'm. Not, I'm blaming this. Uh, this phone for this. Actually. Um, okay. Let me just quickly show you the link. Like at least I've got something that that will work quickly, and I run this. Uh, and you can go to yeah wolf wolfer.am slash something tweet, and you can upload your image, and it will. Uh, and if you put your Twitter, uh, uh, your 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 Twitter name, it will it will tweet you that that image as well from my account. Okay. So my 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 phone isn't working very well now, so that's uh, not ideal. Um, let me just go to another another page. Hmm. Well, that's a uh, total uh, lack of communication here, and I think I know why. Um, right. Let's go back here. Right, let's have a look at this again. OK. Right, much better. Sorry about that. Um, so we have other functions. We have um, uh, another machine learning functions like this one, text structure. Text structure will uh, identify the structure of your of your text uh, and what it should do is uh, it has to call our cloud to grab this uh, grab this information but what you'll see here is it it uh, lays out the sentences and it tells you from the sentences um, you know the the, 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 the the different English structures there which which can be quite useful other function that we have, um, just a couple of others that I thought I'd mention, is text cases. So with text cases, um, well, first of all, we need some data to, to, get some, to get some text. So here we're going to just connect to Wikipedia and get some data from the moon. Um, and you know, like I say, this is all live, which is why we have problems sometimes. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we now um, have our data. And then we've got our text cases uh, function. And from the moon data, we want to extract all the sentences. And here are all the sentences uh, for, uh, for that are within that Wikipedia article. But we can also get out all the nouns, if we wanted to get out all the nouns. And this takes a little bit longer. We can see that we've got quite a lot of, uh, a lot of information here on all the nouns. Uh, while I'm here, I should just close this thing because it kind of gets in the way. Okay, so other things we can do, we can extract uh, language information. So we could say, you know, for, there are these, uh, there are several sentences here, and just say extract uh, the English text from there. But we can also specify, you know, extract English, the English text, the Spanish text. Uh, the French text all separately and uh, and paste that into different things so here 's um, uh, something that i that I made um, uh, quite a long time ago actually, but it still works it 's quite neat. Uh, we have this uh, recipe classify so there 's this uh, nature paper um, called Flavor Network and the Principles of Pairings and it 's looking at um, shared uh, food compounds. Uh, and the difference between cuisines in different continents and uh, how that reflects uh, the kind of food pairings that, that, that there actually are. So, uh, we've got some data, um, and it's a CSV file, so you can download the CSV file yourself. Um, and just to take a look at what it actually looks like, we have this data, you know, it says uh, North American cuisine, or oh, these are all North American. I just randomly sampled uh, five sets of data there, but we've got a cuisine type, and then we've got the ingredients. 
And then what we might want to what we want to do is uh, we want to clean this data and make it more useful for our classifier because the way that our classifier function works is you have to well we're going to have our ingredients and then we're going to have the classification type. So um, well we've cleaned up our data and we just while we while we're at it we will have a looking at how many different recipes there are. What we can see is that um, that there is it, a lot of these recipes are predominantly North American. And the thing about having more data in a, in, a certain, in a certain bin, it may be more likely to skew toward, towards that data. So what we want to do is reduce that data to, let's say, the North, Northern European data, where there's only 250. So we want to get 250 uh, qu cuisines from, from each, of those, each of those areas. So what we do is we collect a random sample of this data. So I create a function uh, that uh, randomly samples this data, fine. Um, and then we're just going to have a look at this, and that's, oh, I forget how this thing works sometimes. So we can have a look at all the ingredients. Uh, we have a look at all the ingredients, great, there's, there's over 250 ingredients or something like that. Uh, and then what we want to do um, is we want to uh, get a training set and a test set. So we want to find out how accurate uh, the classifier that we're going to create uh, is going is going to work. So we need to we need to test on something. So we can just use uh, uh, classify with our training set, and uh, we get our classifier function again. Uh, and then what we can do is we can say, okay, um, what cuisine is something with bacon, eggs, and chips? And it tells us it's Western European, which is great, because I was thinking of a full English breakfast, and, um, and full English breakfasts are Western European. So now what we want to do is we want to deploy. So I've created, and this is, I wanted to be as transparent as possible here, so I wanted to show every, every bit of code that's required. So here we have some, some styling information. So I've got my styling information, and now I want to deploy this into the cloud again. And the difference with this now is that uh, we're going to use my mobile uh, to, to access this, this data, to, to kind of just truly show you that, it's, uh, that this is kind of like a cloud application. We've still got this picture of me. I don't think we need that anymore. So I'll connect to my phone. And oh, you're going to find out my secret password. I think that'll be fine. Uh, and then what we can do is I've already like saved this as a kind of cloud application. And I run this, and we've got a form that was similar to what we saw before, and we can add ingredients, so we can create some kind of recipe. So I'm going to think of something, um, let's have a think, Latin American. So what we can do is we can say, okay, let's add some uh, avocado, uh, what other things do we have in like Latin American food? Maybe bacon, um, probably some kind of beans as well. Uh, bean, what kind of beans? God, there's a lot of different kind of beans here. So let's just go with, uh, I don't know, black beans, black beans. Whenever I have a, uh, a burrito, um, we have uh, black beans. So. So that seems fine. Let's just make that as a recipe, and let's see what this comes up with. And it says it's almost 100% likely to be, uh, to be Latin American. But they use very distinct ingredients, um, which, is, uh, which is interesting. Right. So we want to test the accuracy. So now I've shown you one example, and maybe you think that I, that I skewed this. Um, but let's have a look at the actual accuracy. So we've got our, we had our test set from before and our training set, and now what we want to be able to do is uh, use, uh, use a function to be able to do this. So we have our classify measurements function, we feed it a classify function, and then we feed it our, uh, test, uh, our test set, and it will give us um, a classify measurements object uh, which we can, uh, we can uh, in interpret in some way. So what we can do is we can say, OK, uh, let's get the confusion matrix plot. And the confusion matrix plot it's a little small. I don't know where I put my uh, my thing here, but what we can see is it's um, uh, South Asian and African cuisines get mixed up a little bit. Western European and Eastern European cuisines get mixed up a little bit. Uh, Western European and Northern European 
um, get get uh, messed up a little bit. So so down the centre is where things have been accurately classified, and then the uh, where things are off centre is where things have been misclassified, essentially. So what we can actually do is we can say, well, how accurate was this? So out of our 50, I think it was 50, oh no, there's more than that. There's like, uh, uh, how many examples are there? There's like 100 examples there or something. Um, we can say that, um, that it was 50% accurate uh, at identifying the cuisine, which is, which is not too bad. Okay. So, um, rapid app development. So, what I want to do to show you is how, how, how easy it is to um, rapidly uh, create an application. And, this is, and, and this, is, this is an example. I like this example because um, I was speaking to a client and I was telling them, you know, this is, uh, you know, we can do rapid app development. And they said, show me. You know, show me an example um, of, of how you, you know, write something right here, right now to show, to, to, to show me this is true. So, you know, I was thinking through my head, and I was like, okay, well, let's do some text analysis. Text analysis is really easy. Well, I thought it was anyway. Uh, and in our language, we can do some simple stuff. So, so we've got this example data function where we can get some readily uh, available texts, which is why I thought text was a good choice. Um, and we're going to get the text of Alice in Wonderland. Um, and then we're going to use our text cases function, which I showed you before, to extract all the sentences. And then, OK, we've got all the sentences. Now what do we want to do? So we want to do some classification. So we have this uh, built-in classifier to do sentiment analysis. So we're going to take each sentence and do sentiment analysis and find out whether or not this sentence was positive or negative. So um, what do we have here? We have uh, five sentences that I, that I got here. Uh, and we can see that the first five sentences of the book I go negative, negative, positive, positive, positive. I mean, it says, oh dear, is a, is a positive thing. It's a bit weird, but fine. Um, let's continue in the interest of science. So now what we want to do is we want to get all of those sentences and convert them into uh, numerics. We want to do some kind of numerical analysis or something very simple, at least, um, because, as I said, this is kind of off the top of my head. Uh, we're going to assign negative to minus 1, positive to 1, neutral to 0, and if you couldn't determine, to 0 as well. Uh, and then we've got the hot. well, actually, I think it's only the first one or two chapters of Alice in Wonderland. What we can see is now we've got it in, uh, in numbers, and then we want to um, accumulate, though, do, uh, do an accumulated sum of those numbers, and then we want to actually plot this. So uh, we plot this, and um, uh, what we see here is that it goes up and uh, up and down. So we can see that there's a positive part to the book, and then it goes down, and it's negative. So what we can then do is uh, we can deploy this. So as I said, this is kind of like a rapid development process. I've now created an API. So you have this function API, creates us an API, and then we can probe that API uh, with a post request. And in this case, I've got a file, Pride and Prejudice. And what I can do is now say, OK, I want to find out, um, well, uh, the, uh, give me this graph of Pride and Prejudice. And anyone can use this now. I even made it public. So this is an API that you can link into right now if you wanted to. So this is taking time. I mean, Pride and Prejudice is a big book. It's one megabyte. And this is Pride and Prejudice. So you can see that it's uh, a vastly negative book. And I've never read it. I don't know if it is negative. But it does, this isn't appealing for me right now. So, OK, I've got a very short amount of time, so let me just very quickly run through this last example. So this is um, like unsupervised machine learning, and this is where things get quite interesting, which is why I want to, want to show you. So let's take um, some, some creature names. So we're going to get some mythical creatures, um, a griffin, dragon, a unicorn, centaur, uh, and we're going to get those images. Um, and in the interest of saving time, we're just going to import the saved images that we have, because we're talking about importing from Bing uh, 240 emails, uh, 240 uh, images, and that's going to take some time. So we've got some images. What we can then do is we can have a look at, uh, at what, these, uh, what these images actually look like. 
Uh, we're getting a training set and a, and a testing set as before. We label, we're doing some labeling here just to do a quick classify. Actually, maybe I shouldn't do a quick classify because I am running out of time. So, I mean, this is something that you've already seen before. You're just doing a classification, but you're doing it with images this time. And uh, long story short, it's very accurate. Um, but let's do something a little bit more interesting where we don't give it the labels. So we take all the labels out and we just have the images. Uh, and then what we want to do is we want to say we use this feature extract function to extract all the features, uh, well, the key features from, from these images to construct something which we, uh, which we can feed in images and do some kind of, uh, well, feed it new images and see what it comes out as. So feature extract takes a little bit of time. It doesn't take too long. Uh, so we want to reduce the di dimensions to two dimensions to visualize something in a, in a vector space that we actually can comprehend a lot easier. Um, we can just plot this. This automatic typing thing is a little bit slow, and when I'm running out of time, I get stressed. Um, so what we can see here is, uh, I mean, these images are very small, um, but what we can see in the we got some images of ponies in the bottom left-hand corner, unicorns in the top right, in the, in the bottom right. In the top left, we have predominantly centaurs. On the right, we have unicorns again. So what we can do is um, um, we can uh, search the system. So we do our feature extraction again, although I don't think we actually needed to do it in this, in, in this case. Um, to create our uh, uh, feature extractor again. Uh, actually, we do because we're separating out now 150 mythical creatures and, um, and using our queries with another 150. So we've got our feature extractor. Uh, and then we can use this nearest function. And the nearest function allows you to say, well, it's a very universal function because we like these universal functions. What we can say is, what picture is this nearest to? So what do I mean by that? Well, let's create the nearest function uh, first, and actually while we're waiting, I guess we can type out the next one, maybe. Nope, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's thinking about it. Fine. So what we can do now is we can create our nearest function, uh, and then with our nearest function, what we can do uh, is we can feed it an image. And so we've got this image of a centaur, uh, and we can say, what's this nearest to? In this, in this vector space that we created, what's this nearest to? And we can see here that it was nearest to a centaur. So it's, we've given a picture of a centaur, and it says the closest thing it's to is this other picture of a centaur, which I think is pretty, pretty neat. Um, and uh, just to show you uh, some more examples, um, let's just say five uh, different examples of this, just to see how accurate it is. Um, we've got... Okay, we've got this reverse picture of a unicorn. There's a unicorn, this dragon is a, is a, is a dragon, this mm, weird unicorn thing with wings. I don't think unicorn had wings, is apparently a centaur. So, okay, well, um, that's all we had time for. Um, uh, sorry about some of the problems. As I said, I, I created uh, this software just in the last week, so it's not really been tested by anyone other than myself, and I haven't really had time to test it. Uh, and this is, this is cool. So this is uh, something that I... Uh, actually, I have the code here. Um, will, it, will it load up for me? So basically, I, um, I, just, I just got the data from all of the... Uh, all of the speakers and what words they actually used in their in their bio. So I did a uh, did a word cloud, and you can see this is a big data logo, and uh, you can see that uh, well, big data obviously are the most predominant words that are used uh, in people's bios, which makes sense for a big data conference. So okay, uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, I <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>